Yes, that Rockets Clippers mm. game. So much pettiness that we will start the show today covering all those angles. Voice of D, what's first? What's the biggest takeaway from the Rockets Clippers game? Well, Clippers beat the Rockets. Uh, there was an actual game last night. But what everyone is talking about today has to be all of these moments that happened on and off the court. CP3, Blake Griffin, Trevor Ariza, Austin Rivers, Mike D'Antoni at the heart of all the shenanigans, Marcellus. Yes, ma'am. Mm. Can you specify <clears throat> one takeaway? Um, the greatest takeaway, if you really want to look at it, is that the Clippers are a better team than the Rockets. No! I mean, I, I know no one wants to talk basketball right now. What just happened here? Uh, well, I can validate what I say. I actually have numbers true. and oh, statistics and, like, nerdy things. That, okay, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. In the, last, show. in the last 14 games, like, my Clippers have won 11. Hello. Yeah. Our, our efficient, offensive efficiency is better. Um, our, we're better from the three-point line. We're, we're not here for any of Okay, but yeah, forget all that. All right, well, all right, the best thing about it is, it's funny that everyone said when Chris Paul, Chris Paul left, we lost our heart. We lost our way. They actually have more fight in them now than they did collectively when Chris Paul was there for those. Wait, what do you mean by fight? Like Patrick fight. Beverly's what tweet? What kind of fight? Well, like, fight, right? NBA like, fight. NBA fight. fight. NBA fight. 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 In, right. in, look at how these dudes are playing, still injured. No De DeAndre Jordan, no Austin Rivers, and we still go out there and beat that team. Yeah, they all have James Harden. I'll give you all that. But this is the <laughs> thing about the Clippers. It's kind of a big deal. I love that you mumble that and then Austin Rivers is proud of And they didn't have an no NBA leader score. No team is scrappier than the Clippers. <laughs> And no team is figuring it out at a better time, post. Right I, before the trade deadline. Marcellus and, I will be, Am I trying? I'm I'll trying to put something together. I'll be nerdy with you for one half okay, second. Yeah, because we have 57 seconds. The Clippers <laughs> are playing much better, and it's somewhat of a shock. They, they never beat time. Houston twice. They yes. beat the Golden State Warriors. They're playing much better than I thought they would. But with that being said, the biggest takeaway is the secret tunnel, man. It's the secret <laughs> tunnel. <laughs> Who no knew there tunnel. was a secret and, tunnel? And, like, how quickly did. did Chris Paul yeah. come up with the scheme? He's right. like, all right, guys, in 20 seconds within right. when they get back there? Yeah. And then who had to tell Clint Capella, uh -huh. you're out of the cool plans, you're the decoy? You're the right. decoy. You're the chosen horse. Well, he's <laughs> me. So he's supposed to stay neutral anyway, right? Yeah, that's about as neutral yeah. as one can Clint Capella, I mean, like, I'm getting look in. Look at it. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, hey, what's going on? Congratulations on your victory. Just hey, go stupid. Can you guys open this door? How long does it take you to say, hey, come with me. We're about to go get these boys. And Where is the secret door? It's it. Well, I used to live across the street to Risk Carlton. That's the Kobe. They call it the Kobe entrance. So Kobe used to be able, when he lived at the Ritz, he would go downstairs, under, and boom, boom, right into the locker room. This is some Goonies Seriously? stuff. It's a right burner now. door. It's a burner Holy door. Cow. It's a real thing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love this so much. Next. That's so next. Good. How should the NBA discipline the Rockets and uh, Clippers? Rises. Uh, according to ESPN's Adrian Rujdrowski, the Rockets uh, on the breach Clippers locker room after the game, looking to confront specifically Austin Rivers and Blake Griffin. So today, they have started an official investigation yeah, into yeah. the events. They're going to get all the info, yada, yada. However, um, they should do a, a like a fan poll and ask us how we want them. Oh, like the NBA All-Star voting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, like so on us. Because it's so funny. Yeah. That I, I mean, how are you going to discipline them? Uh, well, you have to do something. You can't like go what, into though? the opposing locker room. That's even in it jest, that's too much. Door. It, it was a secret door. It was a secret. Not a secret anymore, first of all. It's it's good good door. More detail. <laughs> now we just go to the rich console to make our way into the locker room. I just love how Patrick Beverly is sitting next to Austin Rivers the whole time, and not one player on the Rockets said, I got a problem with Patrick Beverly. Because you can uh, tell exactly. he's about that life. Guess who knows Patrick Beverly better than most? The Rockets. Look at that, boy. They hold Austin head. What they did I say during the playoffs last year? I was like, I'd love Patrick Beverly on my team. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. But, but, wait, can we concentrate on the fact that Austin Rivers in the middle of all this? I love in it. street clothes, no Not less? Not playing. No punk. Well, remember, the first time they beat them, Austin Rivers <laughs> cooked them. Yeah, yeah, them. yeah. And he had a whole lot of lip when he yeah, was but, cooking them. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're in street clothes last night. Yeah. Right, but what is that? They picked out both light-skinned dudes. was like, all right, we're going to fight. Patrick Beverly was like, me too. Nah. Is it racial? It's light-skinned? It sounds racial. Next up, cool with Patrick Beverly's tweet. <laughs> so this isn't the toughest thing, but it's something. Here's what he had to say, quote, it's a different <clears throat> culture in L.A., no more soft poop here. Um, are you, like, and this happened, by the way, like last night you couldn't go to bed because the no. tweets kept coming with right, whether it be right. info or that. <laughs> so are you good with it? I'm, you know what? That is a direct shot to me about Chris Paul mm. because he's the person who was traded, right? right. He's insinuating sure. that, yo, that dude, he's just all lip. He ain't soft. really about that life. He's soft. I'm here now. Like we ain't rolling soft when y'all had CP3. You got me now. Yeah. Which is like, 
Man, mad talk. Marcellus, C what are you going to say here? I mean, Cretans to the mind over matter. You ain't going to make me go against my boy Chris Paul like that. <laughs> you, you ain't slick. We're just talking about Pat Beverly. Come All right. on. Clint Capella with the distraction over here. Hey, guys. Guys, hey, guys. Hey. I have a question. Yeah, <laughs> but that's been the Achilles heel for the Clippers. Injuries and mentality. And now they're looking like they're fixing the mentality. Injury's still a problem. They still no Austin, <laughs> still no DeAndre. We, we get that. This is not a championship team. But this is a team that is showing grit, showing fight, and playing cohesive I mean. enough where they're going to be a threat. Like, it's going to be a tough out of fight for whoever <laughs> faces them in the playoffs. You're going to know you've been in a fight. Well, Which I'm not willing thing. to go that no. far unless no. that fight is with the number two seed, which right now is who? The Houston, Houston Rockets. <laughs> Glad you brought that up, Nick. Yeah, yeah. Should the Rockets be worried about facing the Clippers in the playoffs? Yeah, so like transition. you said, if the playoffs started today, these guys would match up yes. first round. Mm. So should the Rockets be worried at all? They should be, and this is the reason why. Mm. The first game they played, yep. right, the Rockets weren't fully staffed. No, no. But neither were the Clippers. Sure. The second game they played, yeah. the Clippers weren't fully staffed. Never. We are. But neither never. were the Houston Rockets. Yeah. But the Clippers have found a way to continue to beat them despite being shorthanded. What happens when both teams are fully staffed? I'm not really sure if I'm the Houston Rockets, even though I may have a better squad, that I feel that confident that I can just go in and beat this team that beat us twice shorthanded, even though we were shorthanded. They God, should, it's we gonna should, be awesome. If we're so much better, yeah. we should have easily have beaten the squad. Exactly. Instead, they beat us at home. Fully staffed and fully motivated. You know they would have the chip on their shoulder when they go out there collectively play them if they could be healthy in the playoffs. Here's the worst part about it all. Clippers may jump into the five seed, four seed, something like that. They're no, no, slow down. Okay, all right, all right, right here, two and seven. So, it's like, what? Oh, we, 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 That's we, a whole lot we're of We're four back. games away from that with that fifth seed right and now. And you're only like 18 games away from being number one That's seed. That's right. 18 games is doable. <laughs> you I'm should totally you. shoot for the top. We've already no. beat that team. Why do we want to see them again in the playoffs? No. You really cling on to regular season wins more than anyone I know. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs>